The funniest part about the concept that we would be understanding is at most of the places you would find Sadler's theory as a destiny theory. However, it's not a destiny theory. It is a density theory. Now, how this concept of density comes into origin under Sadler's view? So what Sadler was trying to be explain was the region where you have higher density, you would have lower fertility that would be witnessed. That means with more population, you would have fewer number of children. However, with fewer population, you would have more number of children. And that was the sole idea that Sadler was trying to explain. Now, his theory tried to bring about whole of the concept of population growth with the concept of happiness. Now, he plotted a simple curve and that was a curve which was between a curve which was between the happiness and the density. So what he plotted was density on one side and happiness on one side and he tried to explain that the happiness would increase till the time the density increases but at a given point or beyond a given point this component of happiness would start to decline when the density is beyond a permissible limit. As simple as that. So according to him, population will keep on growing till the point of greatest happiness of the largest population or the largest possible people that is there. Also, he believed in two important aspects. One was the prosperity, the other was space. So he said that prosperity, which is through the happiness component would be seen till an optimum point of density is reached. Beyond that, that uh, happiness would tend to decline. And also he said that uh, space is important and it's not the extent of space, but it is the quality of space that matters for happiness. Considering all of these beliefs that Sadler was trying to explain, he basically refuted the Malthus theory and he tried to brought about his theory of density which was later on written as the law of population in 1930s and this theory basically said that fertility goes inverse with the density. So higher the density, lesser is the fertility so more population would lead to higher standards of living higher the density would lead to higher standards of living and this higher standard of living would be ultimately responsible for low fertility now because of the higher standard of living you would have a a economic aspect and a component of happiness that would be attached to it and because of that there would be lower fertility in the areas where you have higher standards of living but soon it was realized that Sadler's theory was not a right fit there was a contradiction that was immediately seen in the regions of Netherlands. In Netherlands, they found out the areas where high density led to higher fertility. And as soon as this was one of the findings, Sadler's theory was contradicted. So what happened was Sadler immediately brought about another component and that was mortality. So under the same graph that he explained, he said beyond an optimum level of density, you would have the density that would start to decline. Why so? Because of mortality, unhealthy atmosphere would be responsible for higher mortality. So other things remaining same, what would happen? You would have higher density that would lead to higher mortality and this higher mortality would be the cause for higher fertility because of the higher mortality again the population density would decline and since the population density would decline you would have fertility that would increase so ultimately he was again trying to justify his first point where he said fertility is inverse of density as simple as that but the second factor, mortality, was brought about in his later works. So again, I repeat, his works was based on the principle of fertility going inverse with the density. 
However, when Netherlands was found as one of the contradictions that was seen, he brought about the element of mortality and he said that beyond a certain point, the component of happiness would decline because the density would reach beyond its capacity and therefore, due to unhealthy atmosphere, mortality rates would increase. Now, with the mortality rates increasing, you would have lower density and this lower density would again be responsible for higher fertility. So, he tried to prove his initial point again that fertility would be inverse of density. Again, there was a criticism that Sattler was unable to explain the difference between two terms which was fertility and fecundity. So, fertility is basically the number of children born to a woman and fecundity is the physiological potential of a woman to bear a child. So there was difference between the terms fertility and fecundity. However, Sadler was unable to explain this difference. So that was another major criticism of Sadler's work that was seen. Beyond this, there was a common uh, similarities that was seen between Malthus and Sadler. So as Malthus sa said, his works was that population grows exponentially and the food resources grow uh, arithmetically. So he focused on two checks. One was the positive check, the other was the preventive check. However, Sadler basically criticized both of these checks and he said that none of these checks is required. The balance would happen automatically because of the happiness that is there and he completely rejected the positive and the preventive checks by Malthus. The next important thing was both Sedler and Malthus were of the opinion that density and fertility behave inversely with each other. If one is high, the other is low. But the explanation for the same varied by both the scholars. So Malthus basically said, if you have a higher density, this would reduce the resources for the people and therefore there would be automatic checks that would be seen. However, Sadler believed that it is not due to the check on the resources that is there, but it is ultimately governed by the effluence. So, effluence would be one of the reasons that would determine uh, an inverse relation with higher density, higher standards of living and with higher standards of living, you would have reduced fertility that would be seen. So, that was a difference between the Sadler's and the Malthus view. Now, continuing this, you had the Lotka and the Volterra cycles that were very, very prominent in population studies. Now, this cycle talked about a relationship between a predator and a prey. A predator, as the name is big, is one who consumes and prey is one who is consumed. Okay. So, lion eating a tiger, lion is a predator, tiger, uh, sorry, lion eating a deer, lion is a predator and deer is a prey. So, a smaller name is being eaten by the larger one. So, predator and prey. Now, the growth of the population of the prey, according to the lotka Volterra cycle, the growth of the population of the prey diminishes as the number of predator increases. So, more the predator the population of the prey would decline because more would be the consumption that would be seen. And there was also another important concept that was laid that the growth of the population of predator, that is the growth of the population of the predator would increase with the num increase in the number of prey. So higher the number of prey, you would have more predators that would come into action and ultimately what happens is the predator consumes the prey and that is what happens in reality when we consider the renewable natural resources as a prey and humans as a predator. So human beings actually consume 
the renewable natural resources and we are as a predator onto the resources the renewable natural resources that are there which would be considered as a prey but there is a well maintained balance that needs to be established between the two and that was the key aspect of the lodka volterra cycle very very important and essential components we would be covering many more interesting population theories in the upcoming lectures stay subscribed for many more updates from our side have a wonderful day ahead